Welcome back, everybody, to Caravan of Garbage, where this week... We're going into the future, the year 2005. Whoa, that's the year after iRobot came out. Right? Uh, for those people who don't know, Transformers The Movie mm. from 1986 is actually set in the year 2005. Mm. Please leave a like for that incredible fact. Expect more, by the way. Oh, yeah. yeah. We, got, we got facts out the wazoo, out the robot wazoo. <laughs> that's right. A big boxy caboose. Mm. Yeah. Anyways, I think this needs a little bit of background in terms of this movie because some people might be older or younger than us and not know. So the Transformers mm. was created as an animated series Go on, yes. in 1984 to sell a bunch of toys that they'd repurposed from a Japanese robot line. Yes, there were two uh, lines of Japanese toys. They were called Diaclone and Microchange. Mm -hmm. One was big and one was little. And they were like, one turned into a gun. Yeah, one did turn into a gun. That's that's that is can't do that these days. No. In this culture. They'd have to have to turn into um equality. I think that's great. I think that's great too. <laughs> I would I would love a robot that turns into equality. <laughs> but anyway, uh, uh American company Hasbro yep. purchased the rights to sell these in America and they decided to combine the two toy lines into one line. Yeah. But they were like, How are we gonna advertise these toys? But luckily, our old pal Ronnie Reagan decided to completely deregulate advertising to children so instead of and a bunch of other stuff all right a lot of other stuff <laughs> but the one we love is how he deregulated <laughs> advertising to children so instead of like a 30 second ad spot where you're like hey maybe your kids would like these toys yeah it, you could just do a 30 minute animated advertisement and just be like you are these toys you've got to get them or your psyche will be destroyed forever <laughs> And then the show would cut to a commercial of the toys. Yeah, no, like, that's true, yeah. Get get some of these toys. Yeah, what should we do in between the advertising for this toy? How about some advertisements for the toy? I showed my son a few of the original episodes because I actually watched them going into this. There's mm. like a three-parter that's like an origin that kicks uh -huh. everything off. First of all, I kind of, prior to this, I'm like, ah, that show probably kind of sucks and whatever. F for what it is... Uh -huh. It's okay. Yes. They put some effort into That's like true. the lore and the animation and the voice acting voice is incredible. Acting is ter terrific. So Peter Cullen, who still voices Optimus Prime a lot of the time, he's incredible. Frank Welker, who's Megatron, does like most of the Decepticons. Mm. If you don't know him, you absolutely know him. You've if heard you've him seen, in something. If you've seen any cartoon ever, he's yeah. been in it. That's right. The show from the 80s, every five to eight minutes, it cuts to black where a commercial break would be. And my son's watching it and he's like, what is this? Right. Why is it... Why, why does it stop? And then it comes back and they briefly recap a thing that just happened mm. and then the show continues. Yeah. So I had to explain the concept of how Reagan deregulated everything. Of course, yeah. <laughs> you both saluted your portrait of Ronnie Reagan. That's right. So the thing about that show is as well, it's mostly harmless in terms of like the damage that they inflict on each other in the world of Transformers. There's, lot of, there's a lot of shooting over each other's heads. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Until... <laughs> oh, until Transformers the movie. A movie that I saw when I was five. <laughs> so what they decided to do, they wanted to go big with this. Mm. They were two seasons in. Yeah. And they went, let's jump 20 years in the future. Oh, my God. The year 2005. What's life going to be like? Oh, my God. iRobot just came out. Everybody's going to be driving a hot rod and it's got fire, yeah. on the, fire on the sides and big exhaust stacks. And the idea of this movie was mm -hmm. to kill... I would say 80% of the original Transformers, mm. including the main guys. And then there's just a director's note that's like, but can we have some of those dead guys just appear in later scenes <laughs> due to animation errors? Sure, absolutely. Yeah. If that's what you want, <laughs> we can definitely do that. So here's, here's a list of some, but maybe not all that die mm. in this. Ben and Lawrence, if you could just, you know... <laughs> put a little montage to in this, memoriam? I guess. In sure, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> We've got Optimus Prime, Ironhide, Ratchet, Prowl, Brawl, Wheeljack, Windcharger, Megatron, who obviously comes back, Starscream, Skywarp, Thundercracker, Shrapnel, Kickback, and Bombshell. The third season, which came after this, though, revealed that Huffer also died off-camera at some point during the movie. <laughs> now, I say that because my son knew that Optimus Prime died because it's kind of a thing he does now. In every continuity, oh, sure, of he takes an opportunity, a moment to die for a mm, bit and come heroic back. Heroic sacrifice. Somebody, yeah. If he's not going to be ordered by Jesus, who's going to be? Wahlberg. <laughs> That's right. It got to the point where like a scene would end or a character would like go off screen or fly into Unicron or just turn a corner and he'd go to me, is he dead? And I'm like, wow. you know what? He might be. Right? <laughs> I don't know. Uh-huh, sure. <laughs> he loved it, by the way. Okay, that's great. Okay. <laughs> he was not put off by the animation. 
such no, as it is? No, I think... Because let me tell you, James. Yeah. I saw this as a kid, obviously. Mm. I got it on VHS when it, when it first uh, came onto that. Still very relevant format. Sure. But I haven't seen it as an adult for many, many years, and I mm. went back. But I remember thinking the movie is a cut above the animation of the TV series. And, and going back is. into it, it is, but not all the time. No, I agree with that. Some of the scenes, the animation is quite good. It has even like an anime-style quality. Like yeah. it's kind of, there's a lot of detail. The animation is quite fluid. There's like the scenes when Autobot City is transforming yeah. and the scene when Unicron is transforming from mm. planet to robot and, you know, some close-ups and there's sort of like hero shots where you see, mm. you know, the, the character's Making dying, <laughs> dying mostly, or impassioned speeches, or the scene where like Unicron is consuming a planet, and yeah. it's all all the pieces are flying off it. But a lot of the like minute to minute animation is really not a lot better like than Stilton. the TV series. I don't disagree with that, and I think also because when you're animating something like this, it's way more complicated than just say like a person, because a person has like curved lines and maybe a t-shirt or some clothing and whatever. Oh, you're taking my language, brother. <laughs> Ooh, a few curved lines, some clothing. <laughs> I'm even just, oh, yeah. I'm talking just arms. Mm. And the face is... Yeah, yeah, I hear you, brother. <laughs> and the face is just like a blank canvas with a few things thrown on. But here, because everything is boxy and shaped a certain way and they have to shift perspectives and transform, mm. that's very difficult to do in 2D mm. or very time-consuming and difficult. So I think, you know, when you get shots like that iconic one of Optimus leaping in the air and, like, doing a twist. And he's flipping in the he's air and he's shooting all the yeah. Decepticons. Oh, my goodness. That's good stuff, mm. man. But, no, I don't disagree in terms of, like, it's not Akira. No. I guess would be... No. Uh, would be a, Yes. If, if I was to pick, like, a movie which has got some of the most iconic animation of all time and compare it to Transformers, mm. I would say that other one is better than this. They are of roughly the same era, though. So, yes. You know. That is true. Were you traumatised by the death of Optimus Prime? It's a great fight, by the way. No, my sister was. Yeah. Here's the thing also. Depending on the version you watch, at the end of the movie, a little voiceover comes in and it says Optimus Prime will return. Yeah. Apparently they added that in in some cuts because children were too upset. <laughs> my version did not have that. No. As far as I was concerned, he was dead for good. And I'm glad. Yeah. <laughs> Optimus Prime will not be returning. Mm. Please purchase Rodimus Prime. That's right. Or he'll be next. Yeah. Dry your eyes and <laughs> purchase Rodimus Prime. But the reason, though, that happened, this is quite a famous story, I guess you could say. So they were also working on a G.I. Joe movie as well at the same time, mm. which, from what I remember, is fine. I don't, I'm not really a G.I. Joe guy. I think you were more. I don't know. I have seen it, and it is fine. Anyway, so <laughs> Duke in that. <laughs> That's our G.I. Joe episode, folks. <laughs> No, we've done G.I. Joe episodes. Ah, forget it then. Oh, actually, we've got a Snake Eyes episode coming up as That's well. That's true. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. So the idea in that was to kill Duke. Mm. So the people behind this went, well, we'll kill Optimus then also. Oh, yeah. But then this ended up coming out before the G.I. Joe movie. Mm. So they changed the G.I. Joe movie to be like, oh, no, he got, he's fine. Yeah, yeah. He, got, he came out of his coma and he's fine. So <laughs> it just ended up being Optimus Prime dying <laughs> and Duke Getting speared with a snake, but then being okay. That's right. Now, I have thoughts, Mason. Go on. About the whole Hot Rod slash Rodimus Prime situation. Is your question, do you think that Rodimus Prime sometimes is awake at night and he goes, geez, this is actually kind of a downgrade, if I'm honest. <laughs> <laughs> I was the coolest car in the universe. Yeah. Now I'm like a weird family camper van, but I got flames down the sides. Can I go back? Can I somehow go back? Yeah. The answer is yes, James. He does it in the British comic books. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Okay, that is one thought. Uh -huh. That his upgrade, mm -hmm. like he gets bigger in robot form uh -huh. and he turns into a camper van. That's, right. That's bad. Mm. That's not good. No. Camp Does that mean that Optimus Prime originally was a real cool guy before he got the Matrix of Leadership? Well, he was... No is the answer, James. <laughs> I know the answer is that, but what if it was? He was Orion Pax. I know. Nerd. What does he turn into? It's probably like a block. But anyways, I always had the opinion, I would say even till recently, that Ultra Magnus should have been the leader because he's got the look. Oh, yes. But here's the thing. Watching this again. He's got the look. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's got a real rock set about him. He does, doesn't he? Mm. But I've had my mind changed. Okay. First of all, he just doesn't have it. You know that thing you need? The touch. The, the touch. Yeah, he doesn't the, have the touch. The riz. Yeah. 
He doesn't have it, Mason. No, I agree. That's for the kids, me using that word. Yeah, I'm, no, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> the first test that he has from Optimus, where Optimus is like, you can be the leader, is that he drops the matrix of leadership. That's true. Listen, mate, if you haven't got fucking hands, mm. no, yeah. you cannot be the leader. Agreed. Get in the bin. The other thing is, I know he's like a more developed character now. Like all of them are. Mm. Don't fucking at me with your Transformers lore. But, <laughs> okay, I won't. Sorry. <laughs> but he is... By design, mm. bargain bin optimus. Mm, I don't know if I in agree with that. And this is why, though. Okay. Because I had my suspicions, and this is right. So in the early script, Optimus Prime's death was different. Now, since the Matrix of Leadership had not been thought up at the time... He died on the robo-toilet. <laughs> oh, yeah. I shouldn't have had this robo fried peanut butter sandwich. <laughs> he died with so much energy on in his robo bowel. <laughs> Optimus Prime would have handed over his own essence, so a white coloured Optimus Prime would emerge from his body to take its place inside Ultra Magnus. Oh. And the original Ultra Magnus toy. It is Optimus Prime. It's Optimus white. Prime yeah. with some shit like stacked onto it. <laughs> that's true, yeah. So that, that's my point, Mason. Mm. He's Optimus Prime, but he doesn't have it, Mason. No, I agree. You know what they've gone with here? Mm -hmm. They've gone with the mash effect. Okay, you're going to have to explain <laughs> that. I think even more so, I think there are plenty of people here who, who are familiar with Transformers, but less the Korean War dramedy mash. Mason, the finale of mash is mm -hmm. still the highest rated... TV event of all time, maybe. That all right? cannot be true. Yeah, well, right. it is, maybe. All right. Or it was for a time. Mm. Now it's the Good Doctor. <laughs> the Good Doctor finale. <laughs> so, in MASH, whenever a character would be replaced mm. in the show, either they died or whatever, they would replace them with not just the same guy again, mm. but the opposite. For right. example, Trapper John McIntyre was a bit of a womanizer and a cad and a ladies' man. Mm. And he was replaced with BJ Honeycutt, who was a family man. Oh, yeah. Henry Blake, mm -hmm. who ran the MASH hospital, mm. the 4077, he was a civilian doctor turned reluctant colonel, mm. right? He didn't even want to be there. He just wanted to fish. Anyway, when he was shot down over the Sea of Japan, <gasps> they bought, spoiler alert, they bought in career army man Sherman T. Potter. Frank Burns, terrible doctor. How many more of these do you have? <laughs> this is the last one. Okay. Frank Burns, terrible doctor, bumbling fool. He was replaced by Charles Emerson Winchester III, played by David Ogden Steers, big fan. And he was a world-class surgeon mm. who gave Hawkeye, not that one, a run for his money, Mason. Uh -huh, so uh -huh. I like the idea of picking somebody you wouldn't necessarily expect mm. who has a different kind of vibe. An unlikely hero. Exactly. I don't necessarily think that... This paid off in the animated show afterwards, also because they ended up going, yeah, Optimus Prime is he's back and hot rod, you can you can you can lie down for a minute. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I but I appreciate the that it's not just a carbon copy. Yes. Is what I'm saying. Mm. Anyways, Megatron. Him getting rebuilt, that's yeah, great. That's Love cool all that. Yeah. I don't know whether I I don't know whether I agree with the decision to bring in Leonard Nimoy to take over from Frank Welker. I, don't know. I know he's a name mm -hmm. and he's got a great voice. Yeah, he does. And he comes back in Revenge of the Fall and he's he does a voice in that or something. Optimus <laughs> Prime shoots him in the head in that movie. We've covered them. We looked at all of those movies. He's a he's a sentient vending machine and Optimus <laughs> Prime shoots him in the head. Yeah. I, I like him, though. I prefer the Megatron design, though, I believe. And here's something fun. So Welker had previously provided the voice Screams Only for Spock in Star Trek Three: The Search for Spock. Oh. And they, they flipped it. That's a real Garfield Lorenzo music Bill Murray situation. It certainly is, Mason. <laughs> here's something I didn't know. RC also. Mm -hmm. The cola. The cola, yes. Uh, the, the pink lady. So one of the original... Demands for the Transformers toy line and cartoon series that there'd be no female Transformers because this was marketed strictly for boys. Mm. This was boys only. That's right. And men. Boys don't like <laughs> girls. We all know that. <laughs> That's true. However, writer Ron Friedman fought hard to include female robots in the Transformers lore as his daughter was a huge fan of the franchise and that led to the debut of the first female Transformer in this. There you go. So that's fun. Yeah. And like 20 years later, you can finally get an RC <laughs> yeah, toy. So. No, right. Well done, everybody. We did it. Yep. Here's some things I noticed and that I liked. Oh, yes. Except for one thing that I didn't like. Whoa. Yeah, Is that going to be the end or are you going to make me guess? I'll make you guess. Okay, great. Here we go. Cup and Hot Rod hanging out together. Mm -hmm. That's a great pairing. I agree. I'm loving that. Mm. An old vet, a veteran. Mm -hmm. and, and then young Hot Rod's like... the latest hot model. Yeah, it's yeah. good, isn't it? That's great. And and Cup, you know, he's like... Uh, he's always he's always razzing the kid, but, he's, but he believes in him. And I think that's lovely. Yeah, it's good to believe in somebody. yeah, yeah. yeah. And, you know, um, 
Hold Rod put him back together after he died. That, well, that yeah, that's a <laughs> a big, very fun. Uh, it's interesting that after Optimus Prime is killed in a very dramatic fashion, the rest of the movie is other characters being killed and then just being put back together <laughs> with like a bit of spit and sticky tape. Yep, and then it, then they're fine, including Ultra Magnus, mm. a joke, Mason. He's a joke. <laughs> um, I love Soundwave's loyalty to Megatron. I mean, to a point. Yeah, he did let him just get like dropped out of the. Astro train. Mm, he right dropped into space. Yeah. yeah, and that's fine. But just, how he's just like, nah, I like, he's my mate. I'm going to look after this guy. <laughs> I'm not going to be later. My voice is weird. People <laughs> make fun of me. <laughs> the the, the constructor con said I had no charisma. <laughs> that hurt actually a little bit. I think he's got it. He's got it, basically. Would you say he has Riz, though? I would say more so than uh, Blaster, the Autobot oh. equivalent. Mm, okay. It's not, it's, it's not as cool. I think. Yeah, yeah. I love King Starscream. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Got the crown. Mm -hmm. He's looking good. Yeah. He's just like, finally, after mm -hmm. two seasons of telling Megatron every episode that one day I'm going to kill you yeah. and I'll be the head of the Decepticons. Yeah, that's right. And Megatron's like, I, I hope not. Yeah. <laughs> he finally gets I'm going to definitively kill you. I'm not going to throw you out into space <laughs> and there's a, it's a chance you'll be revived by some sort of weird robot demigod <laughs> and you'll come back and get me. I'm going to definitely kill you. For real. I'll, sh I'll shoot you in the head before I do that. Yeah. Oh, nuts, I forgot. <laughs> anyway, he gets his moment. Yeah, yeah. I love it. And you know what? One of the things I do remember that still holds up is him being absolutely turned to dust by Galvatron. Yeah. Oh, that's a, that's a good shot. Really good stuff. And then Galvatron almost immediately just falling down the stairs. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I've got a headache. I'm falling down some stairs. Maybe Galvatron you could turn into... The turret that you... Come, what are you doing? He's a handgun, then he's a turret? Uh -huh. How about something mobile, you know? He is mobile, James. In, in a sense. Mm. Because he can walk and fly and no, stuff. No, the, the, the later versions, he has treads. Treads. Yeah. Junk. It's like a little tank. Yeah, no, I get it, but, like, that's junk. Is this the thing you don't like? No. Oh, wow. So it's two things you don't like. I didn't like. mean to get, get into that. No, you didn't mean to get riled up with the Galvatron design. I didn't. I, didn't. Um, wow. I love the human transformation suit. You put on a person, oh, yeah? and you're like... Bop, bop, bop. Does that break all your limbs when you turn into a little car? Probably. Yeah, that's what I thought. But that's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I've written here, Eric Idle is a very unpleasant character. Which one of these things do I not like, Mason? I think it's that one. Yeah, you don't like his performance as Rekagar. No, because it's just like... Earth commercials. And this is okay. already a commercial, uh -huh. you know? Right. Like, if you've got Eric Idle, give yeah. him something to do, you know? Mm. Not just this kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Make him, make him you know, replicate the cheese shop sketch. Exactly. Mm. Um, jokes on you, he wasn't in the cheese shop sketch. Uh, I hate Unless it. he was, I can't remember. I hate it when the joke's on me, Mason. <laughs> That's right. I like making jokes about people. I'm just going to double check. He might have been in the cheese shop <laughs> sketch. Now, I like the soundtrack in this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's got Weird Al for one. Oh That's my God, cool. it really does. This version of the Transformers theme song. By Lion. Incredible, oh my God. obviously. Yeah. One of the best. You got the touch. Yeah. Is it the fact that they, they reuse... Is that, is that your issue? Like during it. Yeah, yeah. It's unrelenting. Mm, it yeah, is unrelenting. It's like you need to like yeah, yeah. have a moment where maybe there isn't music. <laughs> uh -huh. Just like a few seconds every now and then. Yeah, there, you sure, know? sure, sure, yeah. But look, oh, that's a that's a minor complaint, but I feel yeah. like it makes the whole thing feel like hectic and busy mm. when maybe it doesn't need to be all of the time. Yeah, but see, this was the TikTok of its time. That's Kids true. Kids were loving this. You've got to keep their attention. Yeah, I know, you're right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Here's something that'll keep your attention, Mason. Go on. When they said shit in this movie. <gasps> did, did the version you see have... Yes. Wow. Yes, did. Oh, shit! What are we going to do now? Did your parents turn to you and, and just slap you, give you a cuff across the ear? Yeah, but it was unrelated. <laughs> it was just time for that. <laughs> they checked their watch and they delivered a slap. <laughs> Just kidding, my parents are delightful. <laughs> yeah, so this was uh, infamous for having the line, oh shit, what are we going to do? Yeah. This was removed from all home releases until the year 2000. Yeah, so that's fun and good. Anyways, Mason, it's time for green trivia. And also, it's Rodney's retirement, everybody. Oh, yeah. I think this joke has run its course. And maybe he'll return. And I understand people will call for it. Mm. But every now and then... You have to just let something go, yeah. you know? And if it's beautiful and wonderful, it'll come back to you maybe. Or we'll forget. Right. We'll probably forget. In <laughs> fact, that's, that's absolutely the thing we'll do. Yeah, yeah. But he'll always be with us. Yeah. So let's roll it one more time. Rodney! 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 I'll miss him. So Orson Welles was quite sick at time of recording and a lot of his dialogue was laboured and unusable 
synthesize synthesize making his voice robotic Mason oh yes that helped bring it together that's terrific in the end yeah mm. when asked about his role though he said you know what I did this morning I played the voice of a toy I play a planet I menace somebody called something or other then I'm destroyed now apparently though when he was cast he expressed admiration and excitement for animation as a format so there you, go. you know he was yeah. dying so maybe yeah, that's probably, why he was yeah, grumpy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. One potential plot proposed by writer and story editor Flint Dilly and creative director Jay Backel would have involved Optimus Prime embarking on a journey to discover the origins of the Transformers race. Oh. Which we sort of got in one of the Bay movies? Yeah, and we did get it in the um, comics and the cartoons as well. Yeah. You know the Quintessons? In the, I think in the... Cartoon continuity, they created the Transformers. Cool. But in other continuities, it was something else. It was somebody else or something. Some bloke in a, in a garage. Great. It was Wahlberg. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt it. So they find out that their home planet is actually a giant robot itself. And using the Matrix, the planet Cybertron would have transformed into a robot to face off against the evil Transformer planet Unicron. Whoa. A pawn of the Quintessons. I'm sure that's happened before. Like, Cybertron transforms into something, I assume. Yeah, so also in the, in the, in the American comic books, yeah. Unicron and his nemesis Primus. Yeah. Not the band, no. Uh, they they started at the beginning of the universe, and they were in like a like a different plane of existence. And then Primus tricks Unicron into like putting his spirit into an asteroid, and then the asteroid turns into Unicron, and Primus turns into Cybertron. Damn. And so, but you and Unicron, uh, Primus is like, well, I'll create a race of sentient robots, and they'll they'll be able to live on this planet. And Unicron's like, well, I'll become a real big dude. <laughs> what do you think about that? I'll be bigger. <laughs> That's pretty good. They're both pretty good options. I I think so, yeah. Yeah. So the band who sings the song on the soundtrack called Nothing's Gonna Stand In Our Way and Hunger is listed as Spectre General, but the band's name is actually Kickaxe. So when the soundtrack was being assembled, they thought the name Kickaxe sounded too threatening, (laughs) so they listed them as Spectre General, but the band was not notified of this change. I see. (laughs) So that's fun. Yeah. And the last bit of green trivia is that Shockwave is actually in two movies from 1986. This movie and the movie Aliens. The toy of him is a spray-painted silver and half-transformed is some kind of medical tool. Oh, I didn't a, know that. In a medical bay. Okay. And I went, that's great. Mm. Anyway, box office for this. Not good. Bad. Oh, very bad. Really bad. So mm. on a budget of $5.6 million, the box office return was $5.8 million, And that's only in the US and other, and it was sort of released in other regions, but not. it didn't get like a full rollout, if you right. will, oh. all around the world. It was the 99th biggest film of the year. Oh, no. Yeah. Hasbro, between this and the My Little Pony movie, lost $10 million in 1986 yeah. on these absolute follies. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mason. Yeah, but wow. since then, obviously, it's become somewhat of a cult classic. Yes. Uh, and it has made its money back and then some with re releases on VHS and Laserdisc and DVDs and YouTube reviews. All of these mm. things yeah. benefit this movie. Yeah, yeah. Which, all in all, I didn't think I was going to like it that much, mm-hmm. but th- there's, a, there's a lot of fun in this, Mason. I think there's a lot of charm to it, yeah. Yeah. Mm. It's cool. It is cool. It's got Riz, Mason. <laughs> It's got Riz. <laughs> you don't think so? No, I don't think it's got Let Riz. Let us know below if it's got Riz. Riz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And while you're down there, you might be in the description. Mm-hmm. That's a great place to poke around in because there's actually a link to bigsandwich.co. That's right. Where our videos, Caravan of Garbage videos, always go up there early, including next week's series that we're starting. Oh, what's that? <laughs> but also, if you do want to sign up there, there's bonus podcasts, there's movie commentaries. That's right. There's Let's Plays. All of that stuff is exclusive. We've also got an episode on the latest Transformers movies. Look at all these critters running about, whatever it's called. Mm. Beastmen. That's right. Transformers Beastmen. Mm, Beastly boys. Beastly boys. If you do want to check it out, uh, thank you to Ben and Lawrence for the edit, and let's all go home. Okay. Can I go home? I live here. You need to leave. Oh, man. (laughs) Oh, well, grab that jam, you guys. We'll see you next week. Goodbye. Bye.